Okay, our topic for today is Aristotle's concept of good life. And he wrote something about it, the good life. Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics and the Good Life. Are we living the good life? That is our questions to ourselves, diba? Right? Necessary reflections must be made on two things. What standard could be used to define the good life? And how can the standard serve as a guide toward living the good life in the midst of scientific progress? As a guide toward living the good life in the midst of scientific progress and technological advancement. Documentary film entitled The Magician's Twin by Lewis and the case against scientism. Lewis postulated that science must be guided by some ethical basis that is not dictated by the science itself. One basis is Aristotle's Nicomachean ethics. According to Aristotle, an important Greek philosopher, every art and every kind of inquiry, and likewise every act and purpose, seems to aim at some good and so it has been well said that the good is that at which everything aims. Okay, that is written by Nicomachean Ethics 1 verse 1. Eudemia, the ultimate good. Everything, according to him, is aimed at the good and thus the good may be expressed in different ways. However, the good life is a different thing. He said that since to resume all knowledge and all purpose aims at some good, what is this which we say is the aim of politics or, in other words, what is the highest of all realizable goods? Some potential candidates for the ultimate good includes 1. Pleasure is the ultimate good. He says that one aims for pleasure in the food they eat or in the experiences they immerse themselves into. While pleasure is an important human need, it cannot be ultimate good. It is transitory, or which means it passes, it does not encompasses all aspects of life. Okay, sabi rito, pleasure daw is the ultimate good. Okay, for example, we work hard to earn money so that we can satisfy our pleasures. So it means that we aim for the pleasure we want to experience. For example, the pleasure of eating luxurious food, diba? or the pleasure of staying at a luxurious place. So sabi dito, pleasure daw is the ultimate good. But, of course, it is transitory. So it, it is not long-lasting. It is not long-lasting. And, of course, it does not encompass all aspects of life. So, let's move on to another. Wealth is potential candidate for ultimate good. Many, if not most, aims to be financially stable, to be rich, or to be able to afford a luxurious life. There are people who have become wealth very wealthy. There are people who have become very wealthy, but remain unhappy with the lives they lead. In this sense, wealth is just an intermediate good that is only instrumental. It is not the ultimate good because it is not self-sufficient. And of course, if you are financially stable or you are rich, you can do most of the things you want to do in life. So it can be a potential candidate for having a good life. Number three, fame and honor is another candidate for the ultimate good. Many people nowadays seem to be motivated by a desire to be known, to be famous. Others strive for honor and recognition. Many people act according to how they think they will be admired and appreciated by other people. However, this cannot constitute the ultimate good, simply because they are based on the perception of others. Fame and honor can never be good in themselves. If one's definition of the good life is being popular or respected, then the good life becomes elusive since it is based on the subjective views of others. So, for some, fame and honor is a candidate for having a good life. Why? Because if you have fame and honor, you have power. For example, politicians. 
some of us wonder why, bakit kaya gusto nilang maging politicians? Eh, ang daming trabaho. ba? Diba? And some of us are wondering why do politicians want to be politicians in the first place? Except for the amount of money they can corrupt. ba? Diba? If they are not corrupt, then why do they want to be a politician? This is the answer for that. Some people's happiness depend on the power they have. Okay? Kung hindi man yung pera ang habol sa pagpapolitician, isa lang yun. They desire power. Okay? It's either they desire power so they can help other people. It can be. It can be one reason. But mainly, it is because of power. Some people find the good life in having power. Okay? Another example is those who are working as a celebrity. Okay? If you are a celebrity, you are famous. And some of us look at celebrities as if they have perfect lives. That's why we look at them as if they are living a good life. Diba? Another are the social media influencers. We also look at them like celebrity. Diba? They are famous. Okay? Sometimes we perceive them as they are having a good life because what they portray in the screens or in the roles that they play or in the social media, they have good lives. That is how we look at them. So sometimes we perceive the good life as if it is incorporated with fame and honor. Okay, do, do we get it? Unlike pleasure, wealth, fame, and honor, Happiness is the ultimate good. In the Aristotelian sense, happiness is living well and doing well. This concept is called eudaimonia. You means good and daimon means spirit. When taken together, this means the good life, which is marked by happiness or welfare. It is a flourishing life filled with meaningful and divorce. And empower the human person to be the best version of him or herself. Being happy is being good in spirit. So sabi dito, happiness daw is the good life. It is the ultimate good. Okay, why? You can never say you have a good life if you are unhappy. Diba? You only say that your life is good kung masaya ka. Diba? If you were happy, then that means... You are living a good life. So, sabi dito, unlike pleasure, wealth, and fame, and even honor, that is transitory or lumilipas, happiness stays within, okay? That defines how you are living a good life. Happiness seems more than anything else to answer to this description. For we always choose it for itself, and whether for the sake of something else. While honor and pleasure and reason... And all virtue are excellence, which was partly indeed for themselves as a part of any result we should choose each of them, but partly also for the sake of happiness, supposing that they will help to make us happy. But no one chooses happiness for the sake of these things or as a means to anything else at all. Nicomachean Ethics 1 verse 7 According to Aristotle, man's form comprises a soul which has a plant-like part, an animal part, and a rational part. And now he asks, how should we live? What does it require to live a good life? His answer, man can only achieve happiness by using all abilities and capabilities or living a life of virtue. So sabi ni Aristotle, there is these three forms that comprises our soul, which was plant-like, parang halaman, an animal part like animals, and a rational part. He proposed two hallmarks of eudaimonia that includes virtue and excellence. Thus, happiness in the sense of eudaimonia has to be distinguished from merely living good. Eudaimonia transcends all aspects of life for it is about living well and doing well in whatever one does. Virtue is the excellence of character that empowers one to do good and be good. Its opposite is called vice. According to Nicomachean Ethics 1 verse 10, 
we reply that it cannot be right thus to follow fortune. For it is not in this that our will or woe lies. But, as we said, although good fortune is needed to complete man's life, yet it is the excellent employment of his powers that constitutes his happiness, as the reverse of this constitutes his misery. Okay? There are two types of virtue, according to Aristotle, intellectual and moral. Excellence, then, being of these two kinds, intellectual and moral, which were in intellectual excellence owes its birth and growth mainly to instruction and so requires time and experience, while moral excellence is the result of habit or custom and has accordingly in our language received a name formed by a slight change from habit. Intellectual excellence, Tao, is requiring much time and experience. So you can have intellectual excellence, Tao, if you have enough experience in life so we are intellectually nourished though if we have more experience in life while in our moral excellence naman daw is formed by having several habits okay or how you morally depict yourself by your habits okay there are three forms of happiness according to aristotle that concludes happiness is a life of pleasure and enjoyment and happiness is a life as a free and responsible citizen and lastly happiness is a life as thinker and philosopher so happiness though is found when you are pleasured and you are enjoying your life another is happiness though is as a is being free and responsible citizen and Happiness thou is if you are a thinker or you you analyze all the things in life and a philosopher. Okay, if you are a philosopher kasi you look for answers or you provides answer on your life. So that means thou you can find happiness by that. Aristotle then emphasized that all three criteria must be present at the same time for man to find happiness and fulfillment. So, dapat meron ka nung tatlong yun. He rejected all forms of imbalance. Had he lived today, he might have said that a person who only develops his body lives a life that is just as unbalanced as someone who only uses his head. Both extremes are an expression of a warped way of life. So, sabi niya daw, your life should be balanced in all those three aspects. Okay? So, is eudaimonia uniquely human? Eudaimonia or happiness is unique to humans for it is a uniquely human function. It is achieved only through a rationally directed life. Aristotle's notion on tripartite soul is summarized in the next table. Aristotle's notion on tripartite soul involves rational, sensitive, and nutritive, wherein humans thou are born to be rational, animals are sensitive, plants are nutritive. Okay? When you say rational, you are theoretical, practical. Being partially rational, wherein locomotion and perception is involved. Okay? When you say locomotion and perception, they are able to manipulate their movements and their perception whether to go or to not stop or go like that okay okay while nutritive in plants that means plants are able to supply their own growth nutrition needs and reproduction needs okay aristotle's notion on tripartite soul also says that on the nutritive degree all living things, example, plants, animals, and humans require nourishment and have the ability to reproduce. On the sensitive degree, only animals and humans have the ability to move and perceive. On the rational degree naman, only humans are capable of theoretical and practical functions. Humans possess the nutritive, sensitive, and rational degrees of the soul. So, lahat ng tatlong yun meron ng human beings. Only humans are capable of a life guided by reason. Happiness is a uniquely human function 
for it can only be achieved through rationally directed life. Okay? Out of these three forms that we have as a human being, this nutritive degree, sensitive degree, and rational degree, happiness is a uniquely human function. Okay? And happiness can only be achieved now on the rational degree. Wherein, rationally, we can direct our life. Okay? Eudaimonia is what defines the good life. To live a good life is to live a happy life. For Aristotle, eudaimonia is only possible by living a life of virtue. Aret, a Greek term, is defined as excellence of any kind and can also mean moral virtue. A virtue is what makes one function well. He suggested two types of virtue. One, intellectual virtue. Our virtue of thought is achieved through education, time, and experience. Key intellectual virtues are wisdom, which guides ethical behavior and understanding, which is gained from scientific endeavors and contemplation. Wisdom and understanding are achieved through formal and non-formal means. Intellectual virtues are acquired self-taught knowledge and skills as much as those knowledge and skills taught and learned from formal institutions. While moral virtue, also known as virtue of character, is achieved through habitual practice. Some key moral virtues are generosity, temperance, and courage. Aristotle explained that although the capacity of intellectual virtue is innate, it is brought into completion only by practice. It is by repeatedly being unselfish that one develops the virtue of generosity. It is repeatedly exhibiting the proper action and emotion of response in the face of danger, and one develops the virtue of courage. Moral virtue is like a skill. It can be acquired only through repeated practice. Example, playing a guitar. Everyone has an innate capacity for intellectual virtue, but not everyone acquires it because only those who devote time and practice develop the skill of playing the instrument. So, sabi dito, um, playing guitar can be learned by everybody, but only those who practice thoroughly can acquire the skill of playing guitar. Okay? Pwede ka matutong mag kung gugustuhin mo. And everyone can learn. But only those who will practice it regularly or who will dearly love playing guitar will acquire the skill of playing guitar. It's like that. Okay? Both intellectual and moral virtue should be in accordance with reason to achieve eudaimonia. A virtue is ruined by any excess and deficiency in how one lives and acts. A balance between two extremes is a requisite of virtue. A virtue thou is ruined by any excess and deficiency. Of course, if your virtue would be incorporated with vices, bad vices, okay, your virtue would be corrupted. Okay, what then is a good life? To summarize this, what then is a good life? Ano nga ba ang good life? Okay, putting everything in perspective, the good life is the sense of eudaimonia, is the state of being happy, healthy, and prosperous in the way one thinks, lives, and acts. The path to good life consists of the virtues of thought and character, which are relative mediators between the two extremes of excess and deficiency. In this way, the good life is understood as happiness brought about by living virtuous life. We can draw parallels between moving toward and the good life and moving further, progress and development in science and technology. In appraising the goodness of the next medical procedure, the new social media trend, the latest mobile device, or the upcoming technology for food safety, one must be guided by Aristotelian virtues. Science and technology can be ruined by under or over appreciation of the scopes and functions it plays in the pursuit of the uniquely human experience of happiness. 
refusing science and technology altogether to improve human life is as problematic as allowing it to entirely dictate reason and action without any regard for ethical and moral standards. By imposing on science and technology an ethical standard that's not dictated by itself, as Lewis proposed, not only will scientific advancement and technological development flourish, but also the human person. So, that comprises a good life. Okay, so this is the good life. I hope you learned a lot of things about living a good life here. Okay, that is the end of our slide. Remember that we are going to have graded recitation on Monday. It comprises everything that we have tackled, all the chapters that we discussed. Okay, just review those and we will have a graded recitation. Um, As a review for the upcoming midterms exam, probably next week. If not next week, then after Holy Week, okay? And see you on Monday. Thank you for listening and have a good life, guys.